Okay, chat, it's time for pain. It's time to finally take a look at part two of John Doyle's magnum opus, his manifesto on why he thinks that adult videos and I guess presumably photos, whatever, are evil and destroying the fabric of reality. In part one, if you missed it, I'd highly recommend you go watch part one so you know what we're talking about. But, if you're here live, of course you can't do that. So part one involved John Doyle basically saying, and he took an hour to do so, he said that uh, your reward systems get all screwed up because of pornography, and he believes that 85% of people who use porn are addicted to it, even though the statistics say it's closer to 10 to 15%. So he's just out here making claims, and interestingly, he appears to be under the impression that women don't watch porn at all. So that's interesting. But anyway, I guess let's take a look at part two, and we will see what he has to say. To confirm these symptoms in pornography users, another one just with internet addicts who were also pornography addicts, and then three more um, with escalation in tolerance as it pertains to pornography, and then another 14 more with that escalation into weirder genres, which is part of the tolerance aspect of pornography addiction. So basically, we say yet again, anyone who tells you that this isn't real or that it isn't a problem is a coping addict who should not be listened to. Again, John did this in the previous part too, and I think we even commented on this exact line at the end of the last one, but I, I want to reiterate that the problem is... John is implying that everyone is claiming that porn addiction isn't a thing, when that's of course not the case. Porn addiction is a very real thing. There are people out there who suffer from impulse control issues, and some people use alcohol, and some people use drugs, and yes, some people use pornography to sort of fill that need to constantly have stimulation or have something going on. And that's unfortunate, and I wish that those people would go get treatment, and I hope they get all the support they need. But John's assertion is not just that pornography addiction exists, it is that the vast majority of people who use pornography for any reason are they themselves addicts. And that's just baseless on the face of it. And this includes the DSM. For those unfamiliar, the DSM is basically a book full of flashcard terms that women who think they've had a hard time in life will pay $100,000 to memorize a fifth of. Yeah, let's just, just shit on the entire D of psychiatry as well. Good job, John. J J Newsflash, did you guys know this? John Doyle, high school graduate, has just debunked the entirety of psychiatry by wearing a suit in his parents' house and making a joke about the DSM-5. We didn't think we could do it, folks. Loser. so that they can supplement what you were describing with the professional language, which really just lets you know how smart they are. The DSM has long <laughs> been criticized for being politicized with their practices. And this is, of course, because it's, you know, hard to look at things objectively when you're addicted to touching your own pee-pee, right? This is <laughs> John Doyle, everyone who doesn't masturbate is stupider than me, 2021 why they rejected the idea of hypersexuality despite the fact that many others have described the reasons for doing so as illogical but the american society of addiction medicine has stated that there is no doubt that sexual behavior addictions are real and that addiction is a primary disorder which indicates underlying brain changes and the dsm has even been criticized by thomas incel incel who is the director of the national institute of mental health precisely because they too often rely on political decisions which simply defy reality might ring a bell with some other issues but he even said that the dsm should no longer be considered the gold standard and that he was reorienting research from the n IMH away from the DSM for exactly that reason. And also important to note is that the DSM hasn't been updated in 10 years. Do you know what's happened in the last 10 years? What's exploded in the last 10 years? Pornography usage, as we've discussed, in terms of use, severity of use, distribution, etc. Like, along with all that's something that always happens with the DSM, which is why they update it regularly, which is why we're on DSM 5 right now. I'm sure at some point the DSM 6 will come out and have. All the new research that's been confirmed and stuff be a part of it. That's fine. All the research proving that this is a huge problem. The DSM doesn't even care about that because the DSM is full of a bunch of degenerates. But that being... <laughs> the DSM doesn't say that trans people are pieces of shit like I want them to. So they're degenerate. What's the DSM? Someone asks. The DSM is basically the diagnostic manual for psychiatry and psychology. Um, it basically lists and categorizes 
uh, personality disorders and mental illnesses and, and stuff like that. So if you're trying to diagnose a patient in psychiatry or psychology or whatever, counseling with a certain thing, you go based on what the DSM says, basically. Being said, they did come out with something in 2017 in which they tried to say that these types of problems were compulsive disorders instead of addictions. But the top neuroscientists in the world actually think that they should be recategorized as an addictive disorder. The top ones, you know, the top ones. Because- And maybe it should be for that matter. I don't know. I don't know. But I do find it funny that again, John Doyle is not really arguing the point that he was trying to make initially. His initial point was that most people are addicted to pornography when that's not the case. He's not doing that. All he's doing here is supporting that like, sex addiction or, or pornography addiction can be a thing, which I think 98% of people would agree with. I'm pulling that number out of my ass, of course, but like, I agree with that. I assume most of you understand that that's a thing, but that's not what he's supposed to be arguing based on the entire like thesis statement of this, which is that pornography and pornography addiction specifically are destroying society because everyone's addicted to porn which he hasn't evidenced at all. All he's evidenced is that porn addiction is a thing, something we all agree on, and two, that a lot of people use porn. But that's fine. A lot of people use alcohol too. That doesn't make everyone who uses alcohol an alcoholic. Of the neurobiological similarities between it and other behavioral disorders. And this brings us to the difference between a compulsion and an addiction. People will basically cope by saying that anything you do, whether it's gambling or watching pornography or playing video games, all of those aren't addictions, but rather they're compulsions. And they do this because it makes them feel less guilty about being addicted to things, basically. Because they'll say that addictions can only be chemical addictions. The truth is that if no, you examine the- No, dependency is a chemical addiction in so many words. Again, he's conflating like chemical dependency with addiction when they're different things. Now they're not mutually exclusive either. You can have things where you have both uh, a mental addiction and a, a, a physical dependence like on heroin or something, but they're distinct things that you can talk about separately. The neural correlates for a compulsion and an addiction they're practically identical. Your brain doesn't know the difference. So any rhetoric suggesting that there is a difference is purely for obfuscation. <laughs> it's obfuscation to point out facts now? <laughs> Great. At herring. It's all the same to your brain. Same sensitization, same changes, everything that we've discussed. And while we've been discussing all these problems, addiction in general, uh, a lot of people have probably been thinking, well, okay, it's bad for me. It can be addicting, but I still like it. So how much is okay? The problem with this is that it assumes the problem is binary. But like our friends on the left would say, it's actually non-binary, which means that it isn't as simple as just saying you're either addicted to porn or you're a casual. More importantly, the question of like, where do I draw the line ignores something very important that we've been talking about, which is the reality of neuroplasticity. The fact that your brain is always changing and adapting and learning in response to its environment. And with what we're talking about here, which are supernormal stimuli, it happens almost instantly. And this has been confirmed with studies on topics ranging from video games to junk food that have all found that it only takes a short pattern of use to change the composition and function of your brain. Okay, but our brain changes all the time. Just saying that the brain changes isn't in and of itself a... Uh, how do I put this? Like, the studies that you just cited were involved with, like, video games or, or, or stuff like that. Any activity that can cause you pleasure in some way. Watching a good movie, reading a good book, whatever. These acts can change our brains, but that doesn't inherently mean a bad thing. Brains change all the time. Neuroplasticity is, like, the, 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 the foundation upon which... Our ability to change and adapt to situations and the world around us is built. It's not a bad thing for your brain to change. It depends on what those changes to your brain are doing specifically. Like if I play a video game and I, I have like reward systems built in because I enjoy playing a video game, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing for me to enjoy that activity. Like human beings enjoy certain activities and that's fine as long as you're doing so in a healthy way.
We've also got studies that unsurprisingly show relationships between porn consumption and addiction-related brain changes, and also that about a fifth of high school students who watched pornography uh, more than once a week experienced low sexual desire compared to 0% of those who were not watching it. So the takeaway is that you don't even have to be fully addicted for your brain to start changing and for you to start experiencing some of the negative effects of that. As you're getting older and you're learning, you're changing your sexual environment, all of that is going to affect your brain's functions, along with its priorities, its desires, perceptions, et cetera. It's not good. This is why I get this question a lot, especially after the last pornography video, which is, well, what about hentai? What about pictures? And it's like, dude, <laughs> get a hold of yourself, man. Like, stop finding ways to give yourself permission. It's literally the equivalent of, well, I won't drink pot, but I'll eat chips. I won't play slots, but I'll play roulette. It's like, it's all the same. Your brain doesn't know the difference. All it knows is that it wants that stimulation because that's what you've conditioned it to want. And now that you know the conscious difference, your brain is literally trying to make you like give it that stimulation by having you convince yourself that it's okay. It's not the same. Yes, it is. Get a hold of yourself, dude. Dudes be talking about big government will never control me, but they can't go two weeks without watching cartoons have sex. Get a hold of yourself. Your purpose is greater than that. <laughs> And I think we said this earlier, but I'll say it again. There are two types of people who watch pornography. People who are addicted and people who aren't addicted yet. <laughs> <laughs> there are two kinds of people who play video games. Those who are addicted and those who aren't addicted yet. There are two kinds of people who enjoy watching John Doyle videos. Fascists and those who haven't figured out they're fascists yet. Do you see how this argument just makes you look like a fucking idiot? <laughs> Well, if you're not addicted, then I'm just going to say that you're going to get addicted one day. Mm. <laughs> Based on what? The majority of people in the former category don't even know that they're addicted, which is what's so pernicious about it. People just need to be honest with themselves. But I do understand that it's significantly more difficult given that your brain has rewired itself to pursue that addiction. So again, there's no shame in this. But now that you know, now that you have this information, it's time to change. We'll go over some ways to do that in a second. But a few more things that I want to mention. First, um, one of which being that the last line of defense for many degenerate pseudoscientists is to play chicken versus egg, to basically be like, well, anyone who has a porn problem only has it because of pre-existing conditions. They were already depressed. They already had trauma, et cetera. And sure, some people have pre-existing conditions, but addiction will never manifest unless someone has engaged in chronic overstimulation. Also, there's no research to suggest that young people... Okay, but that chronic overstimulation is probably stemming from some larger issues. I'm not saying that people have absolutely no agency in the choice of what they're doing. They do. But, like, at the end of the day, people's lives exist within the context of their own experiences. And if someone is already depressed, they're going to be more likely to seek out sort of uh, pleasure-creating stimulation or whatever. And they're probably going to be more prone to getting addicted to that. Again, I'm not taking away agency from those people. But it is an explanation as to why some people are more prone to that sort of behavior. There's nothing wrong with pointing that out. People without those conditions can participate in that chronic overstimulation without developing symptoms. And we have to keep in mind that the best data for these types of things is going to be hard to find because it's going to require time that is very rare because it's a relatively young problem and also controls that are very rare because the problem has already become so widespread. But there was a longitudinal study done in California that tracked young internet users over time and it found that young people who are initially free of mental health problems but use the internet pathologically develop depression two and a half times more often. There was another one done in China, which would be impossible to duplicate here, that found that of 2,000 new students who had never had internet access before, 59 of them had developed an addiction um, already over the course of a year. It made them more depressed, more anxious, more hostile, more psychotic, and it was because of the addiction that those things happened to them. And the researchers also said that they couldn't find a solid pathological predictor for the internet addiction, but rather that the addiction would predict the pathologies that we just mentioned. And you might be thinking like, oh, 59, that's not even that bad. Sure, but that's after one year, after having basically grown up without it. Imagine growing up with it, using it every day, then finding out about pornography at an even younger age than that. And then they find out about the internet. It's like it hijacks the most powerful circuitry in your brain, et cetera. It's a huge problem. We can expect all the implications of the internet addiction to translate to pornography addiction.
There was also a Taiwanese study which found a correlation between teen suicide attempts and contemplation and internet addiction, even when controlling for things like depression, self-esteem, family support, and demographics. Why did this get on internet addiction instead of pornography addiction? You've completely switched topics. They're certainly interconnected and related in some ways, and people who are addicted to one are probably more likely to be addicted to the other, but this isn't the discussion we were having? There's also more research from China that shows that while these addicts exhibit definite signs of depression, such as loss of interest, aggressive behavior, depressive mood, feelings of guilt, etc., that they showed little evidence. It's funny to me that John usually dislikes both expert opinion and China, but he's literally quoting, like, research from China, which I have no problem with. I just find it hypocritical that he typically hates these two things, and now he's being like, hey, look! This supports my argument in some way. Evidence of these being permanent, which suggests that their symptoms are stemming from. I'm curious how they're defining internet abusers in that paper too. Uh, their addiction rather than some underlying pre-existing condition. And there was another Chinese study done on a few thousand preteens that found that those who became addicted exhibited increased depression and hostility when compared with the non-addicted group. And also that those who began as addicts but were no longer addicted by the end of the year showed decreased depression, hostility, and social anxiety when compared with those still addicted, et cetera, et cetera. There are mountains of data backing this up. Even things like data from Belgium that found that as 14-year-old boys watch pornography, their academic performance declined six months later. The point of all of it being that we know that the internet makes you addicted and depressed. So from there, we can extrapolate given everything. We know that the internet, like almost anything in life when taken in excess, can create issues like depression. That's not unique to the internet. You could do the same thing with TV or with reading books. You're completely misleading people, John, by saying this. You're acting as though this is something that's unique to the internet when any time there's any stimulation, especially if it's a new novel form of stimulation people are going to get involved with it and people always have to deal with that people with these addictions should absolutely get help i agree but to paint everyone with that brush because there are some people who struggle with it is disingenuous at best Everything that we've talked about, everything that we've learned, everything that we already knew, to say that pornography will end up being regarded as even more destructive and damaging and addictive once people start being more honest, basically, which will probably not happen because they benefit from you being addicted to it. But we'll get into that later, because right now we're talking about symptoms and how your life will get better when you stop doing things to destroy yourself. And I want to highlight that. I want to... Mm, Symptoms like erectile dysfunction, social anxiety problems, concentrating, depression, while they're all different, they do share something in common in the literature, which is the brain changes due to sensitization and desensitization, and evidence of this has been found in even moderate pornography users. The fact of the matter is that dopamine signaling is very important, and declines in that signaling have been linked to diminished sexual behavior, uh, including sluggish erections and climaxes, decreased risk-taking and increased anxiety, combined with a tendency to- I find that so interesting because like, I've, I've been someone who's looked at porn regularly, uh, you know, since adolescence, basically. And I've never really had that issue. Um, not that I even really would have minded if I had, because I don't like my <laughs> downstairs anyway. But, like, even now that I'm on hormones and T-blockers and estrogen, everything's still functional. <laughs> so, just very interesting to me. Who knows, though, John? Towards angry overreaction, which can altogether or even separately make you less willing or able to socialize, inability to focus, which can account for your concentration and memory problems, lack of motivation and healthy anticipation, which can lead to apathy, procrastination, and also contribute to depression. This is just really not good for you, man. There was even a guy who let researchers deplete his dopamine using a pharmaceutical just to see what would happen, and guess what happened? The guy lost his motivation, his senses were dulled, his mood was lower, he was fatigued, he couldn't concentrate, he was anxious, he was restless, depressed, all the stuff we talked about. And researchers have measured these declines in all sorts of addicts, including internet addicts, but there's good news, boys. The good news is that when your brain properly regulates its dopamine and its related neurochemicals, you're going to have a much easier time being sexually attracted naturally, socializing, being extroverted, generally feeling like it might actually get better. This has been shown in research, uh, what is it, after just like four weeks of abstinence from pornography, people are more willing to take risks, they're more extroverted, more conscientious, more altruistic, more able to delay Let me look at that one.
That one's probably going to be hard to find because he just showed a title. Again, John, I really wish you would have linked some of these things. Gratification, less neurotic. I'm not saying that we should ban pornography. Last time I said that, people got triggered. However, in <laughs> Last time people wanted me to destroy their First Amendment right by disallowing them to make adult material, people got triggered. Yeah, don't, don't do that. That's not cool. In all of the scenarios where we save our country, pornography is banned. And lab coats will diagnose you with depression because your body is reacting to things that it wasn't designed to handle. They'll give you all the feel-good pills just to make you even more numb because they don't recognize pornography used to be a bad thing. What are you talking about? If you go to a therapist and explain that you're, like using pornography five times a day and it's ruining your life, they're going to help you. Please, if you are experiencing some sort of impulse control issue in regard to like adult material online and you cannot stop, that's an addiction and you should go get help for that. And if you go, they will absolutely help you. So my brothers, just remember, you're not depressed. You're a pornography- Uh, you don't have to worry about the thing, Baja. I don't need to see it that bad. Addict. You don't have erectile dysfunction. You're a pornography addict. There's no shame in that. The shame is not in the actions taken to get you to this state. The shame is in the inaction once you've realized how bad the state actually is. You weren't supposed to live like this. People were supposed to protect you and they failed. And really all we can do now is focus on making ourselves better and our society better so that two generations from now our sons won't have to go through this and they'll actually have a society that they can be proud of because... The title of the article was... Oh God... And researchers have measured these declared I'm being more willing to take risks. How abstinence affects preferences, January 18th, 2016. It might even just be like an article and not an actual published thing because I don't see any like byline or anything. Fought and won the greatest battles in the history of blood. But it's like, I look at the men in this country, particularly the young men, and I recognize that the same blood that built the greatest civilizations in the history of the world, that fought and won the greatest battles in the history of the world, is flowing through like each and every one of us. Meanwhile, our country- <laughs> Can we not with this like, oh, the blood of our ancestors. Shut the fuck up, John. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're sitting in your mom's house, you loser. Stop it. The fucking LARP is ridiculous. I've never done anything of note, so let me try and take the achievements of my fucking grandparents. It's <laughs> collapsing. It is collapsing. And very few of us feel as though we actually have a purpose. It's just, it's heartbreaking to me. It really is. But, you know, if you talk about that, that's toxic masculinity. That's why men are doing so badly all of a sudden in the last... Wait, what does he think toxic masculinity is? And very few of us feel as though we actually have a purpose. It's just, it's heartbreaking to me. It really is, but... You know, if you talk about that, that's toxic masculinity. That's why ma they cite no primary sources, says Baja. I'm shocked. That's the opposite of toxic masculinity, John. Holding that feeling in and not expressing it is toxic masculinity. It's healthy to say, I feel like directionless and I feel hopeless. That's healthy. You're literally saying toxic masculinity is the opposite of what it is. It's a blog post. He cited a blog post with no primary sources. Shocking. Men are doing so badly all of a sudden in the last few decades. No, actually, it's not because toxic masculinity, because we can't talk about our feelings. It's because your kind needs us to be weak in order for you to be successful. And so you have displaced us, you have demoralized us, and as the logical consequences of those efforts manifest in front of you for the first time in recorded history, you blame toxic masculinity. Despite the fact that what you call toxic masculinity, when it was much more present in society, everyone was so much better off. It's these weak men. The <laughs> oh, no! Slave morality. They need you to be weak with them because it makes them feel less insecure and because it makes you less threatening to the actualization of their worldview. That's ultimately all leftism is. It is the mass mobilization of the spiritually ill. That's why I never take any of it seriously. John is getting so much closer to Nick Fuentes' rhetoric. He's always tap danced around it, but normally he's been smart enough to hold back just enough to maintain a presence on YouTube. But every day he gets closer and closer to the point where even YouTube's gonna have to be like, ooh, we're not hosting this. 
Well, the science says that you need to masturbate to pornography to relieve stress. Oh, you're not a porn addict? Have fun being more likely to get prostate cancer. Okay, addict. I'm just, I'm so done with the weak men. And I like, I don't mean like the beat down men, like the ones who are suffering and who need help. I mean the types who, instead of overcoming their weakness, they insist that everyone else is the problem. It's the ultimate cope. I have nothing to say to those people. I think you're a disgrace. I think that your ancestors are ashamed of you. All they sacrifice- My ancestors are dead. Why do you feel you owe something to dead people who don't give a shit about you or anything anymore, John? That's so fucking unhealthy. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what a 300-year-old dead person thinks. They were probably a piece of shit. Who cares? Only for you to become a slave to yourself and to the oligarchs of society, to have no children and to instead derive your meaning from... from. I don't want kids, John. Kids are shitty. Thanks, though. Pop culture and mass media, I find you repulsive. I think that your lifestyle is an insult to the greatness of the human experience. <laughs> Boy, he's having a real, real good one since Trump lost, huh? But that is of minor importance. Because me and the boys are going to break the conditioning and there's nothing that you can do to stop it. It's inevitable. The prerequisite to your worldview has been that man must lack the discipline that would prevent him from becoming a slave to his desires, which cloud him from realizing just how bad you've allowed things to become. That's why they hate masculine. Someone says, me and the boys? Question mark. His other fascist friends. He means his other fascist friends like Nick Fuentes. Masculinity. Masculinity is inherently right wing because a man is measured by how he controls things. Most Force feminize all men. Hannah for president, 2024. It's importantly himself. It's also a reflection of his character, having control, establishing order. These require strength, and this is fundamentally what masculinity is about. And people who don't like this channel and who don't like us, they'll say, John Doyle looks young because he's young and he's got glasses. What does he know about masculinity? And it's like, bro, you are literally addicted to watching Asian cartoon characters have sex. You're pathetic. And the reason they're like this, even ignoring the insecurities that define leftist thought and affiliation, is because their entire concept of masculinity is derived from pop culture. They think masculinity means, like, aggression, basically. They think of Marvel movies, or they think of when they were bullied in school. And that's what they think masculinity is. And so they look at someone like me, who's in pretty good shape, and obviously, you know, I'm not like this hulking, Bane-like figure. And so it just goes right over their head, because they don't have the capacity to transcend these very sophomore conceptions of masculinity. Is this where John explains to the audience why actually he's a big, beefy alpha male? <laughs> cool masculinity and it's also because it makes them feel better about their own weakness to be able to dismiss someone talking about the importance of everything that they lack be it discipline conviction whatever just be like ah uh, well he looks like he's 14 that's like really what it comes down to because they have no actual concept of masculinity which is related to why you know they think it's a social construct that gender roles are fake and fluid etc the truth is that there's nothing inherently gender roles are that though john they are that though glad we had this talk masculine about aggression because if you don't have control over your emotions and you become aggressive that's not masculine or a lot of times insecure men will use aggression to compensate by trying to embody this caricature of masculinity because again they have no real but john you also perform a caricature of masculinity especially with your intro that like 1950s put together career man suit his wife is there smoking a cigarette that's the same shit you're performing masculinity because you think guns are manly. You got one in the back. You got a fucking World War II helmet. This is all things you're doing that you feel are masculine and you do them. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with those things inherently. It's just pretty cringe when you put it together with your fashiness. That feels like overcompensating to me, but you know, whatever. Concept. Aggression is good when it's rooted in a good man. Anything else is just bitchy chaos, essentially. And when we reestablish the order in our lives by cultivating discipline, we will realize something very alarming, which is that the people running things have hijacked and exploited our biological drives to pursue food and sex, and that has made us weak. And they've made a lot of money doing that. And they've gained a lot of power, too. At the same time, they promote these ideas of freedom. That at least in America, we're free. China doesn't have freedom because pornography is illegal. Maybe that's true. But I'm not sure that it's exactly reassuring to know that, yeah, you know, they subsidize and enable our destruction. But hey, that's just a result of our... Again, America does not subsidize pornography. What are you talking about? Freedom. Because that's what America's all about. Gosh darn it, getting fat and watching people have sex on an iPhone. Capitalism. 
Why do you think that's the narrative? Think about that. Why is it that when that is discussed in the mainstream, because it rarely is, why is it that when it is, it's always in a positive light? Why do you think our government has failed to address it? It's a coincidence. All the people who just so happen to want to destroy our country are also all overwhelmingly supportive of it. It's a <laughs> who are you describing that you think is trying to destroy our country? I assume you're just describing anyone left of Donald Trump. No, I don't want to destroy the country. I want to make it better. Democrats, they're not good at it, but at least a lot of them want to try and help the country. What are you doing, John? <laughs> you are making up an, a problem where there is not one that is significant. There are absolutely people who are addicted to porn. And I'm very sorry for those people, and I hope they're able to get the help they want. In fact, I would advocate for medical care for everyone, including mental health care, so they can go and get help that's appropriate to their needs. That's wonderful. But to act as though this is something that, like, 85% of men are suffering from? Baseless. Completely baseless. The very simple answer, and this is something to consider when you quit, how to properly structure the psychology of it. It's simply that demoralization is a warfare strategy. Pornography demoralizes you. It is a weapon. Treat it as such. Don't get depressed. Get angry. Channel what masculinity they have yet to rob from you into something productive. Take strong issue with the fact that pornography is an attack on men, which means that it's an attack on your sons and on your fathers, which means that it's an attack on the family. It makes men weak. It makes women resent them. Next time that you're enjoying, I know I have a lot of furries in my audience. Next time when you're enjoying a, a nice image of a... Wolfman with a six pack of abs, just know that that's a weapon, okay? And it is destroying the fabric of reality. And vice versa, they don't even want to pursue women. It destroys relationships with women, lowers the fertility rates in our country, it traumatizes children. It's unequivocally an attack on the society, regardless of intention, and should be treated as such. Why do you think the most popular pornography categories are incestuous? Why do you think that generations of young- That's a good question. You know, John, I've actually talked about this before too. Why is the front page of Pornhub covered in step-sibling videos? What are you degenerates doing? John and I are going to agree on this. What are you all doing? Stop it. <laughs> Just want some normal porn, man. Men have been programmed into wanting to have sex with the women in their family, who they're supposed to be protecting and looking after. Just a coincidence? Maybe, yeah. End result is the same, which is that the family unit is being sexualized and attacked. And those associations and attitudes, as we talked about, are being sculpted and neurochemically programmed into the minds of millions of young men. What's that going to look like in 30 years? I don't think I want to know. Those guys are going to be even worse off than we are unless we can do something about it. Otherwise, they're just going to be having an even worse time than us. And we can't do that to them because the fact of the matter is that, and I know this sounds weird, but it's true, like low-key everything about you as a man is like rooted in your sexual desire. That's ultimately like your driving force, which is why the iron law of sexually perceived history is that men did greater things when it was harder to see boobs. It's simply a fact. <laughs> We just landed another rover on Mars! And it wasn't only men, by the way, who did that. What are you talking about? What? As if nothing of import has been brought into existence in the last 10 years? John, what the fuck are you talking about? Everything we talked about earlier involving your brain, dopamine, the reward system, all of that has been compromised by this and it's destroying you. We walked through the science behind it. I don't want to repeat myself, but we all know it's true. Remember when guys actually talked to girls, even like 20 years ago? Remember the motif of every teen movie that came out before like 2010? For like 30 years, there was this sweet spot in Hollywood where it was degenerate enough to put this stuff on screen, but audiences weren't degenerate enough to where it wasn't interesting to them anymore, where you'd go see any teen movie, and the whole problem was that the dudes needed to get with the girls. That was it, the motif of like, bro, I need to get laid now. And then you'd be in the theater like, bro, I know. But that's gone, guys. Don't Wait, does John think that like young men and women don't, like sleep with each other? Does he think that men and women in high school or college aren't hooking up? Oh, John. <laughs> Just because people use their phones to text each other and get in touch with each other doesn't mean they don't meet up to smash, okay? <laughs> Jesus. Don't talk to girls anymore. Guys don't approach girls anymore unless they're like running game. And that's not insignificant. They've robbed you from even the simplest and great. 
the place where people tend to meet each other has moved from, like, public places and on the street to, like, the internet. And then you meet up in real life in person, and that's fine. People don't really like to be approached by strangers on the street, typically, and that's why that sort of went out of fashion. That used to be sort of the only way you could meet new people was going places and talking to them. But now, it's not. Now you can go online, and if you're very specifically looking for something... Let me put it this way. Okay. I could go out and go into the woods and hunt for my food, right? And sure, there's something fun about that, and there's something natural about that. But, you know, it's a lot easier to go on my phone and order DoorDash. Or to go to a restaurant, or to buy food from a store, and to go ahead and <laughs> whatever. You know, I don't know. I miss the chud too. Either way, um, my point is this. Like, things in society change and that's, that's fine. That's fine. The way courtship has changed over time is constant. And it's not going to stop now. Greatest joys of being a young man, interacting with young women. Now it's just grooming you for the rat race. But work is meaningless, so give it meaning through consumption, constant advertisements, eat this food, buy this product, naked girl pretty, must touch pee pee. That's what's coming, not socialism. Remember, don't just consume to live, live to consume. You know it's true, especially young men, like the whole culture's different. Think about the first porn you saw. Now think about the weirdest thing that you've ever seen. Now think about what you're watching now on average. You know it's weird. Honestly? Do I? Nah, I'm not gonna say that. Never mind. <laughs> Let me just say, I think I I watch less weird stuff than I did when I was younger. Specifically because I was younger, and I was like, "What's all this weird stuff that exists out there?" And nowadays, I'm like an adult, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just want some normal ish stuff to take a look at. I don't know. Because you can maybe be like, yo, dude, I saw this video of this chick having sex. It was sweet. But you wouldn't be like, yo, dude, I saw this video of this chick getting raped by a squid. Same way that you'd be like, yo, dude, I went to this party. I got wasted. But you wouldn't be like, yo, dude, I can't function anymore without drinking throughout the day. Dap me up, bro. Bro, I'm addicted to furry porn. Dap me up, bro. The boys are not doing well. The boys are down bad. And you can't expect a society to survive more than a few generations of the boys being down bad. And this is so obvious. Oh boy, I can't wait for history books to say that American civilization crashed because of furry porn. <laughs> Do you think the people who hate us don't know this, that this is like lost upon them? You know what I would do if I were the guy who does things? I'd take a few decades and I'd just weaken the men of society by promoting a sedentary lifestyle that prioritizes comfort and convenience, all while promoting things like pornography, alcohol, marijuana, etc., to usurp the role of natural endorphins while simultaneously trying to just fry their reward center, lower their testosterone with the help of junk food that I'd also be promoting and subsidizing at the same time. Yeah, just basically getting men really weak, getting everyone to hate their bodies, be unhealthy, which would help breed the mental illness that I'm looking to breed since the health of the body and the mind are strongly related. And this would Is this just turning into Tinfoil Tuesday? John thinks that America's like addiction to junk food is is some concerted evil plan and not just the end result of a system of economics that incentivizes addictive buying behavior. People aren't sitting in a room and scheming, John. This is just the result of capitalism. Lower the self-control of the population, too, which is a good thing for me because I need people susceptible to propaganda. And at that point, you just want to feminize the whole society so as to cement the collapse of the tradition. Force feminize all men. Hannah 2028. <laughs> male also do the same with women except just completely objectify them just make them into total whores convince them that it's empowering or something they'll buy it they're women and then just go ahead and also promote sexual deviancy which would logically result in the promotion of pedophilia in a long enough timeline and then now you've destroyed the individual daddy sume says i'd prefer to stay me yeah thus the forced part forced <laughs> components of the family along with the family unit as a whole. That'll help you cement the perpetual childishness of the society. You're gonna want people basically distracted by superheroes and dogs and video games until they're in their like mid thirties, basically just dependent, not worried about starting a family, etc. For context, think about it this way. Imagine there's an emergency. You need somebody's help in a public place. What is the approximate age of somebody in 2021 that you'd look for to where you'd be confident that they could help you in an emergency? Now compare that to where you'd be confident. What's the emergency? I'm not just going to look at random people and assume they can help me, but if I'm in an emergency, I'm going to get the closest people. 
But if it's like a specific thing, I'd probably look for someone who's like qualified. What do you talk? Give me a specific. Like 30 years ago, I can tell you that I wouldn't be confident approaching anybody who appears to be under the age of about 37 to help me in an emergency. <laughs> wow. You have a pretty low opinion of people, huh, John? Anyone younger is too likely still effectively a child. They're too likely to have Peter Pan syndrome. Whereas 30 years ago, I'd imagine you'd be okay. Enjoying things is literally being a child. Approaching anyone who appears to be like 25 or older. Maybe even younger, but yeah. Do that, destroy the family. Uh, remove anything else that they might be compelled to care about. Pride and country, God, heritage, all of that. Replace it with celebrity worship, consumerism, aka money worship, literal Satanism. I don't know. It's all the same. <laughs> yeah. Remove anything else that they might be compelled to care about. Pride and country, God. Welcome, Comrade Yamada. Thanks for coming to the stream. God heritage, all of that. Replace it with celebrity worship, consumerism, aka money worship, literal Satanism. I don't know. It's all the same. <laughs> Satanism. But yeah, then at that point, you'd have a society filled with mentally ill people. They're insomniacs. They're anxious. They're depressed. They have mood disorders. They're committing suicide. At, the, at that point, it's so destabilized. They'll beg you. They will be begging you to take everything away from them just to bring about a sense of control and order into things. And then you're just good to go. You will have effectively bred and weaponized mental illness as a means of con <laughs> consolidating power. That's what I would do if I were the guy who does things. You know what this means? People are going to be like, oh, that you're the guy who does things? No, no. It means that there's no scenario where we survive if these trends continue. It just doesn't compute. Pornography, among many other things, breeds mental illness. And mental illness breeds leftism. It's unavoidable. God, YouTube, come on. And even that aside, let's get back into how it affects families because it makes you as a man less able to fulfill your role in that. How many brown shirts do you think John owns? And how many armbands? Does he mix and match, do you think? Or is it just like one goes with one? It's, it's I don't know. If I were going with that aesthetic, I'd, I'd probably do a mix and match thing. Family. And that's basically because it makes you less of a man. And that's something important to internalize. Women want men who don't watch pornography. And that's not to say that you shouldn't do it because women don't want. Interesting. Because mm, that's not my right to say, actually. Never mind. You to do it, but rather that not doing it will make you a better man. And results in sleep, women will be more attracted to you. Do my you experience has not been that, let me just say. I've known a decent number of women in my life. I don't think I've known a single one that doesn't... No, that's actually... I've known one woman in my life who claims not to watch porn. All the rest of them watch porn. I have a friend who draws porn who's a woman. So, <laughs> come on! And, like, actually like knowing that their boyfriends or husbands are getting off to other women. Even ignoring that it makes your dick stop working. No, they don't. And, frankly, they shouldn't be expected to. But society is preaching the opposite message and so women have now just come to expect this of men and they're told that well it shouldn't be a problem and you know it can actually be something good for your relationship that's a cope and we'll explain why later but the bottom line is that that in itself even ignoring how many divorces and breakups can be traced back to pornography i think it's like 56 percent of divorces are partially caused by it but the fact that you as a man can't i don't think 56 percent of divorces are caused by porn i would imagine increased porn usage probably comes along with a degradation in a relationship because if you're in a relationship that's going badly you're probably going to be intimate less which is going to lead to more porn usage control yourself enough to prioritize your wife or even your girlfriend is a huge problem and maybe you think it shouldn't even be a big deal because well they're not real women and you don't do it that often and you've got all these logical reasons laid out but look man you're not explaining this to me you're explaining this to a woman and if it makes her that upset which it probably does just get over yourself and quit doing it quit coping stop victimizing yourself like my girlfriend's trying to control me by saying it makes her upset when i watch pornography five times a week a lot of guys are going to be right now, they're going to be like, bro, are you simping right now? And it's like, first of all, my dissertation on the psychology of the simp got over a quarter million views, which makes me the authority on this. Secondly, there's nothing epic about degrading women. And it's not white knighting to acknowledge that. And if you think it is, and you're probably just not in contact with a lot of girls, to be honest. It's the same reason why there's nothing good about women being in the military. Feminists have brainwashed women into thinking that it's like all empowering. And weak men will be like, ha ha, how do you like it? Or something like that with pornography. And it's like, dude, do your job. As a man, whether you like it or not, your job is to protect and cherish women. Let me be very clear, though. That applies to women, which means women who behave like women. I'm not saying these bitter, resentful feminists, these high-T feminist types are worthy of that respect. But I'm also not Wowzers. saying that you should be worthy of respect as a man just because you're a man. Because if you're not willing to live up to those societal obligations, frankly, you're not a whole lot better. 
What does it say about a society that sends its women to die in wars or that whores its women out for the weakening of the masses, that grooms its daughters at very young ages to start- John, the United States is not the only country to have women in the military. That's been a thing in Russia for a really long time. It's not uncommon. It's fine. Producing pornography of themselves. That's not progress. That's abhorrent. It's your job as a man to stop it. And if you're not willing to do that. Yes, please control. Women love it when men control everything they do and give them no agency. It's because you're weak or because you think it's funny or something. You should just start an OnlyFans too. Mix your SSRIs and your soy lattes every morning because you're just as bad as the women who are refusing to be women. <laughs> so single John who as far as he may have had girlfriends, I don't know, it's not really any of my business, is now going to tell people like me, people like Jake, who've had long-term relationships, girlfriends that we've lived with, people that we've cared about, John's gonna tell adults what they should be doing with their relationships and how 50% of the population should behave because a book told him to. Reasonable. That's why MGTOW is a cope. This movement of men who are like, grr, we're, we're mad at women, so we're just gonna do our own thing. We're gonna do whatever we want. It's like, dude, cool, I get that, but that's not what a man would do. That's what a boy would do. You're basically <laughs> pouting. You're like, grr, girls are the worst. I don't need them. Whereas a man would just put them in their place. That's literally all you have to do. Just be a good man and nature will take over. The feminist conditioning will melt away. It happens every time. John what do you mean put them in their place please I really hope you specify what the hell you think that means so just keep in mind going forward that's what you got to do that the only reason that women suck right now particularly white women is because men suck right now so yeah you can't just give up on women like how do you think America survives without people bro we need families and we need children and we need them to be good but in order for that to happen we need our men to be good. And if you're a Christian, I ask you this very simply. How can you expect a God to put a good- So are we supposed to infer that he wants you to like slap the shit out of someone if they don't do what you want? If they're not your perfect little trad wife? You're supposed to slap them around until- Or just is it just verbal berating them? Exactly how do you expect to put them in their place, John? Woman in your life, if you yourself are not a good man. You have to earn her. It's that simple. Dudes be like, where's my trad GF? But then they're like 30 pounds overweight. They have a subscription to black.com. The point being that since we already know that married people are the happiest in, in their marriages. I think that's a dog whistle about miscegenation. And it's actually the marriages that make them happier. And since we know that families are the backbone of society, we need you to be in a position to optimize the long-term stability and, and happiness of those relationships with women. We also need you to start pursuing women, etc. You know the list. We've gone over it like 10 times. Quit watching porn. Start kissing more girls. Are women annoying? Yeah, but we need them to make everything function. So we got to- John, I guarantee I've kissed more girls than you. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Isn't that depressing for him? <laughs> Work together here. One, two, three, break. That's the game plan, 2007. But we have to go over a few more things, starting with some of the common copes. The common copes of pornography endorsement. There's two things that we have to mention before we get into those. The first is that very few people will try to make the case that it's good for you. Most people will just say, what? No, it's not bad, which I think is even stupid on the surface because of how much of a change has occurred in society, how pervasive it is. Like the idea that it could just be neutral is stupid, but people will even say, well, it's positive for you. And that gets into the second thing that I wanted to mention, which is that I acknowledge that I might come off as apathetic or cold towards those who are coping to the people who are pro pornography. But the reason for that is very simply that the sympathy for them just doesn't exist. I just have no sympathy for those people. That's the funny thing too. Like it would be one thing if John actually made a video about people who are addicted to pornography, who absolutely exist, right? Those people are real. I totally understand that, and I wish them, you know, all the help and support they need to overcome that issue. But John doesn't really seem to give a shit. He just wants to berate those people and call them degenerate. Like, this isn't even helping them. What he wants to do is do what a lot of these people do. And in fact, groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS did this shit too. They radicalize young men by telling them that their sexual urges are wrong and that masturbation is wrong and sinful and you shouldn't do it. And then you get a bunch of sexually frustrated young men who think that they are owed a woman who's basically a trad wife, and then you radicalize them into your group that is going to 
provide that to them by either installing some sort of horrific, like, religious state like ISIS wants to, or like John wants to with, like, a fashy religious right takeover of the United States. Oh, you can't masturbate because that's sinful, and you're not finding any women because they don't like your personality? Well, come and join a part of our political group, and we'll take us back to the 1950s where women didn't really have a say, and you got to do whatever you wanted to them. It's nefarious shit. And it's because pornography is so obviously wrong and dangerous and harmful that any public endorsement of it can only be due to pernicious or corrupt intent. That's it. And that's repulsive to me. So, yeah, I'm going to take it pretty hard on those people. Literally, I see no difference between them and the people who used to shill for the tobacco industry. And I actually think that these people are even worse. As it would turn out, though, the science is on our side. Basically, you've got these sex-positive psychologists who claim that there's no such thing as porn addiction. It's not bad for you, etc. And they always cite the same two studies from 2013 and 2015. And you'll find these two studies in any mainstream article you can find about, you know, oh, it's not real, it's not bad, whatever. I think they were saying that it's a compulsion issue and not an addiction because these things have specific definitions. They're not saying people don't have issues caused by using porn too often. But what they're saying is the classification isn't an addiction, it's a compulsion. And again, I'm not a psychiatrist, I can't speak to that, I have no idea what would be the more appropriate specification. But John can't either, so I don't know why he thinks he has the authority to talk on this topic. The problem is that the results of those studies were actually in alignment with what we're saying, not what the coom brains are saying. Um, and many experts have come forward to say this, and we could break down exactly what they did incorrectly, you know, what they misinterpreted. My voice is getting tired, so I'll just say for now that no less than five peer-reviewed studies have come out proving that what they found in the 2013 study is actually in alignment with what we're saying, and then six for the 2015 study. So yeah, their information is garbage, which is why it's been excluded from recent reviews of the neuroscientific literature, and that's really all we have to say right now. Maybe another time we'll actually break it down, uh, their research explain why it's bad but for now we'll just state the fact that it's bad which has been thoroughly corroborated by neuroscientific experts plus we basically just explained the entire thing in the last hour or so i mean i became a neuroscientific expert the other day just to make this video so yeah <laughs> i read a cookbook the other day and i became a three-star michelin chef so we have a lot in common positive psychologists take the L yet again. They've got two studies that they couldn't even do correctly because they were too focused on the next time they were going to go touch their pee-pee. We've got like 40 neurological studies, like a dozen reviews of the literature, then 23 linking it uh, to making your pee-pee stop working, with about a fifth of those establishing causation, then like 50 linking it to ruining your relationships and sex life, and like 40 linking it to destroying your brain and making you depressed. And we just explained in detail the neurobiology and neuropsychology behind all of this because, like I said, I became an expert the other day. And the coom brains are seething. Coom brains on suicide watch. The boys take the dub yet again. And by extension, Western civilization as well. But actually, one thing we just mentioned, the fact that our PPs aren't working anymore deserves elaboration. I are? Revealing. I know we mentioned this really startling figure earlier, which is that there has literally been a thousand percent increase in erectile dysfunction in young men throughout the last 15 years. What could- I would imagine people feel more comfortable coming forward to doctors about stuff like that. Possibly be causing that. Because historically, like, between 1948 and 2002, the rate was always at a casual, like, two to three percent, and it didn't start to significantly increase until you got to be about 40 or older. So what happened? The coom brains will say, well, it's because of unhealthy lifestyle choices, but not porn, but things like diet and substance abuse. The fact of the matter is that all of those trends have either decreased in the last 20 years or have not increased at a rate that would cause a thousand percent increase. Obesity is up like 4%. Drug use has been relatively stable in the last 15 years. Smoking is down, obviously, way down. Do we really need to guess? Some people say, well, no, it's actually because of anxiety and depression. That doesn't seem to be the case either. You've got studies showing that sometimes anxiety increases sexual interest by like 21%. Sometimes it decreases it by 28%. And the studies on depression and erectile dysfunction show that it's not the depression causing the erectile dysfunction, but rather the erectile dysfunction that's causing the depression. Plus, even if it were true, the disproportionate increase wouldn't square regardless. And another one that they'll say is, well, you have to watch porn because you need to know what you're doing because sexual chemistry is important. Who, wait, who is telling anyone to watch porn to learn about real world sex? Don't do that. That would be terrible advice. <laughs> That's why you need to have sex on the first date. You need to see if you use sexual chemistry. Yeah. I don't think anyone's telling you you have to have sex on the first date. Far from it. If you'd like to, that's fine, as long as you both consent, but 
No, you don't have to have sex on the first date. You don't have to have sex on the 10th date. You have sex whenever you're both comfortable with it because you're adults who get to decide when you consent. Yeah, that's a cope. I almost feel bad for these people. They've ruined themselves sexually, just totally. If you have a high IQ, it means you're good at sex. I don't make the rules. It's not rocket science. We'll figure it out. That's <laughs> John! You... How do I put this in a way that is not TOS? John, you do not have the prerequisite experience necessary to say that. I do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's why it's a cope. You've got all these women like, wait a minute. Why didn't the guy who I let use me for my body care more about my sexual experience? What the heck? Because it's not that he was bad at it, sweetheart. It's that he didn't care about your experience because he has no respect for you because you have no respect for you, dummy. You played yourself whole. Now no one wants to marry you. Oops. <laughs> Ladies love it when you call him whole, by the way. Jesus Christ, John. Jesus fucking Christ. Look at his face. He's so proud. He's so proud of that. Such a loser. Oh! <laughs> Scale. Okay. Scale of one to ten. Would John eat the box? What do you think? Negative 69. Good answer. <laughs> I feel like John would be like, the clitoris is a liberal hoax. These goddamn commies made up the clitoris to make us think we're sleeping with people with tiny dicks. <laughs> Highly religious married people have the best sex, by the way. And they don't even need to use these like elaborate accessories and, and fetishes because they haven't ruined themselves totally like you guys have. Also, the idea of sexual <laughs> chemistry is a perfectly emblematic feature. Or, because they've only had one sexual partner, they have absolutely no bar for themselves, so they have no idea what their sexual compatibility in their sexual life actually is like. ...of the pathological narcissism that has polluted our culture, this idea of needing to derive immediate physical pleasure in order to justify the existence of the relationship in whatever capacity. Here's the truth. You're going to get old eventually. Eventually, those experiences are going to go away. What's always there, though, is the character of the person, their commitment to you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that attraction and chemistry aren't important. I'm just stating the fact that sin makes women age like milk, which is why girls are coming out <laughs> of college now looking like they're 35. So ironically, the women who act like whores in the name of sexual chemistry or empowerments or whatever are actually dilating the inlet in the hourglass of their natural beauty, which means that they're going to arrive at the inevitability of their sexual obsolescence much faster, and they won't even have anyone to be with by that point. All the good men will be with all the good women who are still just as graceful. But hey, you know, they'll have their cats, right? But anyways, there's a couple more. Uh, the oh, this is a lot. This is so much. This is so much. <laughs> Apparently, dicks are just like the the bad holy grail from the end of the last crusade you drink it and you all of a sudden shrivel up and age a hundred years instantly idea that oh well it's good for you because it decreases your risk of prostate cancer first of all this is just ad hoc justification they want to promote pornography they'll plug anything that they can think of in as the why the end result is that it's going to be promoted but the science on this is total garbage as well basically it boils down to lab coats thinking that asking baby boomers to recall how many times they were masturbating every day each decade is actual science and in 2016 there was a review done of all this data and it confirmed that it's garbage. And the last thing I want to go over here is actually more commonly something that you'll hear from people who are supposedly right wing. And it's another ad hoc, which is pornography is free speech. That's not even remotely true. Washington didn't. <laughs> OK. Pornography is not free speech. The president inciting violence on his Twitter account. Free speech. OK. I'm not sure I understand free speech anymore, John the Delaware so that your daughter could start an OnlyFans retard? Do you actually think it's oh. about free speech? You think that all of a sudden they're concerned about free speech? They barely let us talk about politics. That's our First Amendment. But you think they really care about the Bill of Rights when it comes to pornography? They barely let us talk about politics, says John Doyle in his hour and 42 minute YouTube video on his YouTube channel with almost 300,000 subscribers. Really? 
No, they don't, but they know what it does. Oh, look at all these people that I have to cover today and in the coming weeks that have no fucking voice except for the fact that they're all over YouTube and all over my goddamn suggested videos. ...to you, and they know that once the country is completely demoralized, they can do whatever they want to do without impediment. So keep that in mind. If you are okay with pornography because you support free speech, eventually your free speech will be completely gone. I mean, look at the last 15 years as an example of that trend already. <laughs> Naked people on camera is going to destroy our First Amendment because reasons already manifesting. So that's that. Now I want to go over a few of the most common questions that I was asked after posting the last video on the subject. And the first one is, what can I watch if not porn? Is hentai okay? Are pictures okay? Etc. And the first thing I need to say is that if you're watching hentai or anything adjacent to that, I can't help you. You need to be institutionalized. <laughs> That's a joke, but seriously, the answer is nothing, frankly. And the reason for that is that your brain is still adaptive and those pathways that you've conditioned are still sensitive. And basically anything that you do to stimulate those pathways, even remotely, is going to eventually cause you to relapse and get right back to where you don't want to be. It'll just reinforce and strengthen those things that we're trying to break you free of. And right off the bat, you need to understand that the reason you're trying already to find these loopholes to just totally quitting is because your brain has become structured to make you want to just keep going down this rabbit hole. So you need to just accept that in order to liberate and improve yourself and get yourself back to normal, you can never watch or view any type of pornography again. Seriously, hear that, internalize it, get comfortable with that knowledge. And it might even make you upset to hear that because that is your brain reacting to something that it regards as literally central to its existence. But we can't sugarcoat these things. If you want to be free, then it all goes. No exceptions. That gets into the next question, which is something to the effect of, well, what if I just don't watch it as often? What if I just decrease? You know, it's the same, it's like the same answer to the same question, basically. Like anything that you do to activate those pathways that you've created will just strengthen and reinforce them and will eventually get you right back to square one every time, even if that weren't the case. Remember earlier, we cited research proving that even minor exposure to these types of stimuli will alter your brain's composition because it's not about the level of consumption, it's about the pattern of consumption. Again, John, that would happen with everything that we find pleasurable. An, a delicious grilled cheese sandwich. A hot pocket, if that's your thing. Video games, movies, sex with your partner. All of these things change your brain in some way. The change itself is not inherently bad. And that pattern will inevitably lead to greater addiction. It's a rabbit hole with one axis. You can either go deeper or you can get out of it. There's no alternative. And the last question is, do I have to stop masturbating in general? And I think that question presupposes that masturbating is like something that's actually important in your life. <laughs> it is for most people. What you'll find if and when you quit pornography is that masturbation really isn't necessary. And that's not to say it's that- It's not you necessary. It's a recreational activity, but people masturbate because it's enjoyable. Even if you choose not to watch porn, that's fine. That's your choice. But most people masturbate because it's just a thing mammals do. Don't get horny, but like you'll find out that the reason that you were masturbating so much is because of pornography, not because you just had those urges and then you used pornography to supplement them. That's kind of like the opposite of true. And it's also an issue of activating those pathways because even without porn initially, it could cause you to relapse. So I would say best move is just to totally detox for as long as possible. Plus, to be honest with you, masturbation is kind of cringe and that's probably an explanation for a later time. But basically as a man, I feel like masturbating is the equivalent of like going to a movie by yourself. <laughs> Fellas, is it gay to touch your own dick? <laughs> and also, John, go to a movie by yourself once, once COVID is over. It's fun. It's not something you want to do all the time, but sometimes it's a nice thing to do. There's nothing wrong with it. Especially if you can catch like a matinee in the middle of the day and you're the only one in the theater. It's like you have your own private, like giant home entertainment system. It's very cool. I did that when I saw, I saw, um, Inception the first time with some friends, and then I loved Inception, especially because I was younger at the time. I still like Inception, but, you know, I was a big, like, Christopher Nolan fan at the time. I was the age where that was, like, the height of, <laughs> you know, cinema for me. Um, and I went and go, saw it, like, later in the week. 
on my own just because I liked it so much. And it was a lot of fun. It was one of my favorite movie going experiences. And there's a fun social aspect of going to the movies with your friends. That's an enjoyable thing to do. But I think there's also something to be said for going to a movie and just like sitting and enjoying it yourself without the distraction. They're both really, really fun experiences for different reasons. Like, yeah, you enjoyed it, but, you know, you look like a loser. You know it would have been better with a girl. I always do what I do based on what other people think of me, John. That's a very healthy attitude to have. You never want to be caught at a movie by yourself. Just like you never want to be caught masturbating. It's a one-to-one. So what's the solution? Find a wife. Because then she has to have sex with you and she has to go see movies with you. Those are the rules. Problem solved. but I can't find a wife. Yeah, because you're too busy touching your pee-pee. Get it together, my friend. The window is closing. You're about seven years away from not being able to find a woman who hasn't produced some form of pornography of herself. So act quickly. <laughs> Plus, the mainstream narrative is that masturbation is good for you. It's healthy, all that rhetoric. And I think a general rule that will serve you well is to just pay attention to what is being pushed the hardest by the institutions that are the most likely to be run by people who hate this country. And then just do the exact opposite. Who hates this country, John? You haven't been very specific. You're getting very JQE, and it concerns me. Opposite. Vice News says I should be masturbating. Cool, I'm never touching my dick again. Not even to pee. Here's a red pill. When you don't consume the toxins of the satanic media, you actually don't even have to pee anymore, like physically, because your body will be able to just filter itself adequately. Few know this. But anyways, uh, there's more specific answers to more specific questions online. You can find those at your own accord. There's also a lot of good strategies and advice for quitting, but I was asked to give my advice, and so I will. I'd also advise you, though, to do some research on it yourself because um, there's more information out there. But I'll start with a very basic point, which is that you have to want to quit. You really have to want it because it's going to come down basically to willpower. And the way to do that is to psychologically frame it properly. You need to understand that what you're fighting against is a weapon. It is something that has taken control over you. It is a weapon that is against you, against your family, against everything, your country. You need to beat this. So think about that. When you see the ads, when you see girls being promoted on TikTok, Instagram, understand that is all designed to get you to relapse and to control you. It is a weapon. It's a strategy. Whether intentionally or not, that's the effective purpose. doesn't matter if it's because they want to destroy the country or because they want to destroy you personally or they just want the ad revenue. End result is the same. This needs to make you angry, not depressed, not defeated, angry. That's the proper psychology. List all the damage that pornography has done to you, everything that you hate about yourself and your life that can be traced back to pornography. Crush it into the ground with your heel. Understand that you are being prevented from flourishing. Understand that you are destroying yourself. You will never get a good woman with this pattern of behavior. And if you have one, she won't want to be... I don't think you'll ever get a good woman if you behave the way John Doyle behaves. So you should probably also stop doing that if that's your main goal in life. ...with you for much longer. You weren't supposed to live like this. View yourself as what you are, which is a man who is inexorably flawed. View yourself as innocent and in need of protection. Picture yourself as a child. Find a picture of yourself as a child. Understand that you are still that person. You still need to protect that person. Every time that you participate in destructive behaviors, you are hurting that child. You don't want to do that. And while you're going through the family archives, print out a picture of your great-grandfather. Hang that up next to the picture of you as a child. And understand that if he were here right now, he would break your teeth with his belt upon seeing you lower yourself to such a level. <laughs> John's in an abusive relationship with his idea of his grandparents and his great-great-grandparents. Oh, my God. Ugh. Appeal to the ancestors. Great. Thanks, John. Is that the type of man that you want to be? Is that the type of man that you... I do not want to be the type of person who beats someone with a belt in the face because someone's watching porn. No. Sounds like your grandparents were really shitty people, John. Your ancestors sacrificed for, the men who came before you sacrificed for, so that you could be weak? No. Because no one in World War II masturbated, okay? No one masturbated in World War II. Yes, they painted sexy ladies on their planes and had pinups of Betty Boop and a bunch of other attract- They were literally jerking off to Betty Boop, a fucking cartoon character, John. John! People in World War II were jerking off to cartoon characters. Get a hold of yourself. And as far as how to do that, I have a few things. Firstly, you need to avoid things that trigger you, especially in the first stage of it. Remember, private snafu, another. I can't even play p private snafu on um, 
public domainia because it's pornographic. It's literally just softcore porn cartoons. <sighs> Made for troops. Pornography. They're going to be environments, activities, all sorts of things. So here's a good way to reduce this. Think of the most common places where you usually watch pornography and avoid those places for at least two weeks, no matter what. No exceptions. You do it in your bed. Guess you're sleeping on the couch. But I can't sleep on the couch. Yeah, you can. Tell your family you're experimenting with something because you're trying to reset your spine or something. I don't know. Dang. I have to. No, I'm not going to make that joke. <laughs> They'll believe it. The point being that you need to be honest with yourself. You need to figure out where it happens the most and then avoid those places no matter. I'm, no, fuck it. I'm going to have to avoid my living room, my bedroom, my bathroom, my office. I'm going to have to avoid every room in my house except the kitchen. <laughs> and I'll probably get so bored in there I'll end up masturbating and then I got nowhere to go. <laughs> or what? For at least two weeks. Try to keep yourself out of the house. Go on walks, go to the library, wherever you have to go. Stay occupied, stay out of the house as much as possible because if you're just sitting at home bored, your cravings are going to be uh, a much bigger problem for you. You also need to avoid visual triggers. For this, I would recommend staying off social media, the internet for at least two weeks. All it takes is one e-thought on Instagram to make you, make you relapse. The algorithms are designed for that. They're designed to get young men addicted to pornography so they can profit off ad revenue. You need to detox from it. Plus, social media in general is just terribly toxic, so you'll be much happier anyways. And you can even use this to, you know, like give your devices to your parents or whatever, or your girlfriend. Just be like, hey, I want to stop using social media so much. Is it cool if I give you my phone or my laptop or whatever? I can only use it in front of you if I have to answer a text or an email or something. And they'll just be like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. You'll be good to go. No internet access means no pornography. Or you could just tell them the truth. John, porn exists outside of the internet. You know that, right? Just wanted to point it out. It's like straight up, if you trust them, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this with your parents because parents tend to be pretty out of touch. So if you tell them you're struggling with pornography addiction, uh, they're just gonna like assume that you're watching it like five times a day or something, or you're watching like really weird material. And maybe you are, but you know, the point is that this problem really is generational. And if you think they'd be helpful, by all means tell them, but if you don't, then you don't have to because it's ultimately gonna come down to you and your will and your resolve. And the best employment of that will and that resolve is to just simply stop touching your dick. It's that simple. In practice, it's a lot harder to do, but the method is that simple. If you don't touch your dick, you'll be fine. You know what I'm talking about. You know, guys like to touch their dick recreationally. It's just what we do. But with great power comes great responsibility. And if you can't touch your dick responsibly, then you'll have to hang up the suit. Every relapse can be traced back to touching your dick. So if you don't touch your dick, you'll be okay. And I think there's also, <laughs> I think there's also something to be said about punishing yourself with something that's ultimately good for you. Ooh, yeah. Punish me, daddy. <laughs> so for example... If and when you relapse. Yeah, I don't know if he knows women masturbate too. Very strange. Tell yourself that every time you relapse, you're going to run two miles. Every time you watch porn, you have to run two miles. This is starting to sound like a Dom sub relationship. Like all John's viewers are his subs. And he's putting like a little cage on their, on their, their peepees. <laughs> and he's like, okay, you can't touch that. <laughs> now go for a run. And if and when it happens, you'll have that guilt and that clarity afterwards. You know what I'm talking about. You'll need to channel that into something. So how about literally running two miles? Working out in general helps with this too because it occupies your time, makes you confident, disciplines you. But seriously, hold yourself accountable to that because it'll be easier to do that at first than it will be to quit pornography. Every time you watch it, run two miles. Keep a pace. You'll feel a lot better afterwards, even if you hate running. But the last thing I'll say is that I have mixed feelings about tracking progress. I think there's something good about working towards a higher number of days. I think that helps. But there's also the fact that if and when you relapse, that framework makes you more compelled to just binge because it's like, well, I won't be breaking as long of a streak now if I binge for a few days. That's not good. Also, something to keep in mind is that the whole framing of like keeping track of milestones sort of implies that this is a big part of your life or that it's worthy of that mental volume or there's, you know, I don't know. There's utility to that, but ultimately you want to work towards a state to where you don't even have to think about it because it's just not a part of your life anymore. And of course, as a man, there's only so much that you can do there. Um, you get what I'm saying, though. Bottom line is that you have to quit. The specific technique by which you do it is less important, but you do have to quit because our society is dying. It is dying. And history suggests that we should be Again, able why do you think it's dying, John? You haven't really given a persuasive argument why you think society is dying as a whole. ...able to bounce back from this, but the difference now is that our men are demoralized. They're weak, they're completely pacified, and never in the history of the world has this been the case. That's what's different. And if we don't... How are men weak? How are they pacified? Is it because they're not 
in favor of, like, a fascist coup? At least not most people? What's your bar here? Do something to change that. We're just on our backs with our necks exposed, begging for mercy that we know won't be given to us. And it starts with you. You watching this right now, be that change. Send this video to all the guys you know, even if you don't know if they're struggling with this. They probably are, but still, it's like, this is the single biggest problem that we face because it makes us less able to deal with all of our other problems. It literally robs you of your manhood, your spirit, everything about your essence as a man, and it needs to be crushed into the ground and buried forever. It's the only way for us to take our country back. It is a necessary step. And I hope I've explained it adequately. Uh, you know, it makes you weak, it corrupts you, it corrupts your children, destroys families. It's nothing less than an attack on our civilization, and we have no choice but to treat it as such. So if you're still watching, thank you. The future's ours. Me and you, big guy, still have a lot of work to do, starting with ourselves, as expected. Hey, guys, if you like this video, leave it a... Oh, God, here comes the cringe end thing. You know, I will say that I'm kind of glad that this is the last video that was recorded in the studio. Everything about it, I think, I mean, you know, I take pride in what I do. I think this was really well done. I think that that's why it took so long to do. Um, oh, man, I am so fried. I've never been so exhausted mentally. My arms hurt. You know how when you wear like a suit for a long time, your arms kind of hurt your shoulders? Bro, I'm glad this is the way I wanted to go out in this studio I have I get sentimental about things and I really like this little setup here I think it's it's very humble you know it was very obviously put together <laughs> impulsively from amazon.com purchases with not a whole lot of education as to what is being purchased and why but uh so I guess I don't know I'll, just, I'll I'm saying this right now because what we're doing right now with going to Texas is representing a big change in the direction of HOC and the things that we're looking to do and it's going to be really positive and I'm very excited about it but uh, these are the humble roots. And so I'm glad because, you know, I, I've said this before. The reason I got involved with this isn't because I wanted to talk about fiscal policy and, and you know, radical Islamic terrorism and these kind of like basic outdated conservative issues. I really just kind of. <laughs> we need even more outdated conservative issues like being against masturbation like that fucking Kellogg guy. <laughs> I care about the boys, honestly. Like, I'm, dude, men are not doing well right now. I care about that family structure, things like that. And uh, pornography is is one of the biggest problems facing that, as we've discussed. So, yeah, I'm really glad that we could do this video. I'm really glad that we could do it so thoroughly. Thank you guys for being patient with me. Thank you for watching all the way through. If you're still here, thank you for watching the channel in general, supporting the channel. We've got big things planned. I'm very excited about it. Um, but yeah, I'm fried right now. Voice is gone. Ugh. But this is how we wanted to go out. So, yeah, like, thumbs up, subscribe, video, friend, share, no notifications, all that good stuff. Ugh. You think we weren't about to have a two, three minute outro on a video that's probably like, what, how long have we been going? Hours. This is the longest video in the history of the channel. Going out with a bang. I'm taking a break, though, because I have to, you know, build a new studio, get settled in. So uh, you won't hear from me for a second. You would if I had Twitter, but I got kicked off because I told people to call their congressman. You got kicked off Twitter for doxing. What are you going to do? So thank you. He's such a fucking liar. Thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. I have it on good authority that it does, in fact, get better. So we'll see you then. <laughs> So that's John, and it's embarrassing. Surprise. I don't want to cover John ever again. <laughs> I will, but I don't want to. Moving on. No, I should guess I, I should probably have some last words because it's such a long video. Okay. So John is full of shit. He's, I think, has a lot of issues with masturbation because of his conservative Christian upbringing. He probably has a lot of shame in regard to that, and he's projecting a lot of his feelings about porn onto other people because of that. It's not healthy. Uh, like I said throughout the video, I do feel bad for people who suffer from actual, like, porn addiction. That's, like any addiction, a terrible thing, and I hope you're able to get care that you need, and I hope you can reach out to people to help you. But the fact simply is that the vast majority of people who engage with pornography are not addicts. It's just something people use. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So, I wish John, um, a, 
an easy move to Texas. I hope it goes well. The faster he can get out of my state, the better. And yeah, I guess that's it. That That's John's video for the day.